Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, and welcome to Human Humane Architecture. I'm Tim Schuler. I am the guest host filling in with for Martin Despang, who's on break for the summer. And uh, we're doing a mid-century modern summer uh, through the Hawaii chapter of Doko Momo. Um, and I am here with uh, Richard Lowe, uh, who is an urban planner and urban thinker uh, with Lowe & Associates, which is a planning and real estate consultancy, right? Yes. Welcome. Yes, it is. And uh, Bundit Kanitha Khan, exactly. who's also a designer and an architect with Tadpole Studio, which yes. is based here in Honolulu. Yes. So, thank you guys for being here. Thank Pleasure. You. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about the role of planning um, and how it's shaped Honolulu, both the past and the present, um, as well as the future, right? I believe so. <laughs> 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 I'm looking forward. So uh, let's get to the first slide. Um, we are going to be talking about these three areas of Honolulu. We're looking at a map of Oahu as well as an inset of urban Honolulu. Richard, can you tell us a little bit about the three areas that we're going to be Well, it is. About? It's the southwest. It's a southwest portion of Oahu, mm -hmm. densely populated. Mm -hmm and with very, very important uh, interests in, in architecture and planning because the traffic is very heavy mm -hmm. and the highways are very busy and take up a lot of space. And so we're looking to Im improve upon it in a way that will make it more functional for the community as a whole mm -hmm. and more beautiful mm -hmm. for those using it. Yeah. That's wonderful. So before we get to some of those big ideas, tell us a little bit about how you came to Hawaii. You've been working here uh, in planning and in real estate for a long time. What brought you to Hawaii? What brought me to Hawaii was the expansion of the design of the state capital mm -hmm. to a master plan for the whole civic center, federal, state, and city. Right. And I had done planning studies, mm -hmm. and so I was hired to come over and be on the team that produced the master plan. Okay. Well, let's go to the first or the next slide then. What year was this when you came to Hawaii? 1964. Okay. And what were your initial impressions of the city when you arrived? Well, at first, getting off the airplane, I, I didn't want to come in the first place, but I came. <laughs> It was an opportunity at the time. And I got stepped onto the tarmac at the airport, and I had this amazing feeling from my head down to my toes that I was at home. Oh, interesting. Little did I know I'd, I'd be here for as many decades as I had. <laughs> That's great. And as I understand it, you told me you, a friend picked you up at the airport or a colleague, someone you knew professionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they drove you past Queen Emma Gardens, right? They did. Which was brand new at the time? Fairly new. OK, fairly new. Fairly new. OK. What were your impressions of that building? You would go on to live there later, right? Yes, yeah. I actually did. Well, my impression was that it was a, it was a somewhat high rise, a mid rise building, but very good looking, and it, it sort of added to the calm I had felt at the airport to find such a, a beautifully designed set of buildings and grounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a picture, I think, of Queen Emma Gardens in 1965. Um, mm -hmm. Show that, yeah, there, and there's an aerial view of the grounds and the tower. The, yes. The three towers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very much so. The gardens are very extensive, and, and around behind the two towers, there are pools and little islands and places where you can have a party mm -hmm. and enjoy the out of doors, uh, in addition to, to the apartments, which are attractively compact, but, but attractive. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful setting. Tell us a little bit, because we're talking about planning and not just the architecture, tell us about some of the mechanisms that were in play that allowed places like Queen Emma Gardens to be developed in the first place. Very important. The, uh, the, the, con the redevelopment law was still functioning in America in the 60s. And 
it was a, they were able to consolidate a bunch of small lots into a lot sizable enough to create this type of project with lots of space and lawns and pools and so on, which, which uh, other apartment projects sometimes lack. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're forced to fit onto much smaller lots that were really intended for houses. Right, right. And so was this, Queen Emma Gardens, was it developed in conjunction with the H1 being built? Was that? No, the yeah. H1 came first. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Um, well, let's talk about one of the first projects you worked on. You mentioned you were you came to Hawaii to help develop a master plan for the Civic Center area, which now we all know, but obviously wasn't there at the time. Tell us a little bit about what some of the big, kind of major, uh, you know, recommendations of the Civic Center master plan was, and describe the scope a little bit if you can. Yeah. The, well, the first the, the first problem was to solve a location for the state capitol. Some people wanted it on the waterfront. Some people wanted it, by the way, it had nothing to do with that step. Okay. Some people wanted it on the windward side and so forth. And it was prevailed upon by a lot of businessmen downtown and civic leaders that it should be where it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, near the old capitol, Iolani Palace. Right. Right. So that was a big decision to be made. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, it, after the master plan was prepared, the big issue was, should it be adopted or, or enacted as a, as a law that would freeze everything in place, mm -hmm. except without permits? That was not done. Uh, it was felt that it was best to leave it rather open mm -hmm. and uh, capable of being, uh, you know, a guideline, yeah. but not necessarily frozen in space. Yeah. The uh, one of the interesting th things was the closing of Kapilani Boulevard, which used to stop at the edge of uh, the Civic Center, right, right, where the Mayor Fazi office building is now, right, and across the street from the the old advertiser building, mm -hmm. and it was it was removed by fair. Frank Fozzi, who saw that on the plan and decided it was a heck of a good idea. Right. I remember our people saying, they'll never do it, but let's put it in the plan anyway. And, and he, but he saw it and did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it created the, what is now the Civic Park. Right, right. Otherwise you had, because it used to, Kapilani used to you know, continue on that curve up to Baratania, right? It was just up. a street like. Oh, up to Vineyard. Up to Vineyard, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that just all got ripped up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a theme that I think we'll be revisiting throughout the show a little bit, this uh, notion of the good idea uh, properly envisioned or properly communicated can uh, spark real action. Yes. Yeah, despite maybe how unlikely it seems at the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what else? So Civic Center stretches all the way from uh, the Capitol building all the way to the waterfront, right? Even more. Theoretically, ex it, ex it, it, they, they wanted to designate that it extends up toward Punchbowl farther mm -hmm. than it actually does okay. because so much of it is built and permanent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it does go to the harbor, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, quickly before we move on, I want to talk a little bit about some of the forward-thinking ideas you guys had at the time, because even though this was the 1960s, it still uh, prioritized green space in a big way. Mm -hmm. Lots of trees called for in the plan, lots of big park-like open spaces called for in the plan, lots of uh, walking paths. Other streets were taken out, right? Mililani yes. was taken out to become a pedestrian path. Those are ideas that it seems like Honolulu could still be using more of today. Right. It is. If, if, you, if you can bundle acreage mm -hmm. into large lots, you can do so much more mm -hmm. with the intervening space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, creating that whole civic park, yeah. for example. Yeah. And you know, from listening to Richard, you know, we share the same office. So this is the time that the architects, the landscape architects, mm -hmm. and also the planner really get together mm -hmm. with the community mm -hmm. to make all this thing happen. Mm -hmm. There's a clear communication, 
you know, all around that make this thing happen, and it's still proven to be a very successful, yeah. even to this day, you know. Queen Emma Garden still look very elegant. Mm -hmm. and whenever we go there, we always you know, look at it and yeah. be very cheerful about it. Yeah, yeah. Much of the work done at that time holds up when, when it was that collaborative, when yeah. they brought in the right people. Yeah. One point that may be of interest, too, is that uh, the client for the Civic Center mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was actually the the city and county mm -hmm. no the I mean the state I apologize for the the state of Hawaii it was the client mm -hmm. technically yeah. but who represented the client it was a huge committee of people who were who were of a of a good frame of mind good good intent mm -hmm. and they wanted to back the the architects the planners and create a space that that uncontroversially mm -hmm. and it was like that mm -hmm. interesting yeah yeah well let's talk about um, let's go to the next slide the Aloha Tower let's mm -hmm. talk about that area because unlike the Civic Center even though it didn't not every building you drew came to pass mm -hmm. uh, that largely was was created all of the federal building the, the federal building a lot of the state buildings got built Aloha Tower area there um, you know, just Makai of downtown mm -hmm. has kind of had a, a different fate. Can you tell us a little bit about what you know of that area? Well, uh, I, I got interested in it really after Bunda did, <laughs> and we he pointed out the, that th there's no communication, but I mean, very little communication or challenging communication between Aloha Tower, which has a very lovely park, Irwin Park. Mm -hmm. With, which is now temporarily a parking lot as well, and, and the downtown and Chinatown and and Bundit felt that it that we we should that would be a central idea mm -hmm. for that uh, that those two locations mm -hmm. and in general and then it flowed from there to the to the whole community to try to make individual places, whether it's Kaka'ako or mm -hmm. the Bishop property in Kaka'ako or uh, Ala Moana, right. or even Waikiki, yeah. uh, feel as though it's, it, it, it isn't thwarting the, the visits by people who you know, say things like that, oh, I never go to Waikiki. Well, they should, <laughs> they should want to go to Waikiki. <laughs> right, right. Or they never go to Ala Moana Park or something. Right. And we thought that they, they would do so if if it were a, a smoother connection between the two, and that idea you'll see in several instances here. Right, right. So we have we have one slide of some of the proposed developments for the Aloha Tower area. Um, yeah, you can see some there. These are all none of none of these came to pass. Right. These are all suggested over the years, proposed by developers and other. Over a 26-year period, the, the, the dominant authority in, in the Aloha Tower area um, asked for and invited developers to make uh, recommendations and, and propose to redevelop the whole thing, including where the, where the tower is, mm -hmm. and also to 14, which is near Chinatown, that pier, okay. and all the way over to where next to the federal building. Right. Uh, and they received, it, and it took 26 years to process these requests. And they, re you mentioned, it, we, we can't talk about each one because we don't have a week <laughs> here. Uh, but two, it was very interesting that Chris Hemeter, the famous developer of a number of big hotels, mm -hmm. and a successful developer of those mm -hmm. hotels here, he put in a proposal, and he spent a million dollars preparing to win that competition. He was very confident and mm -hmm. thought he would, and he was very good with bankers. He could always raise the money he said. It was going to be a $500 million project, and it was turned down. 
<laughs> and I'd like to be able to tell you why, and I can't, because I don't know. <laughs> We're going to have to find out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so, right, so this um, area has, hasn't been in that 26-year period. We haven't seen a major redevelopment. We did see a new tenant move in. Hawaii mm -hmm. Pacific University now occupies um, quite a large portion of the Aloha Tower Pier, they, right? they they own in leasehold yeah. uh, everything right near a lot of tower, right. except the edges, which are the belong to the harbor strictly, right, <laughs> and where the ships dock, right, right. But they own all everything inside, yeah, and the buildings and so forth. Got it, got it. And I've even noticed already since that happened, there's been a much more. Um, you know, it's been activated in a certain way, and there's been a stream of students, you know, continuing up Fort Street Mall to the main campus and back, and, and, and which is really interesting, but that ties into something you guys have been working on together a little bit, right. been developing um, a much kind of both safer but also more pleasant connection from downtown to that area, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that, and we can throw up the next slide so we can see this rendering that you guys have done this is well yeah the the tell idea us what, tell us what we're seeing with this the you know if you walk down the fourth street mall mm -hmm. it's very beautiful mm -hmm. the trees are mm -hmm. beautiful and and the views are are wonderful both directions yeah you look down and you see a lower tower it's a remarkable view mm -hmm. But when you get to Nimitz Highway, you know, it, it's like the Mississippi River. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it sort of it discourages walking across with all the traffic. It's just not hospitable. Yeah. But the landscaping in Fort Street Mall is very pretty. And, and that's not the only place. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Mililani Street, I think. And it's very pretty there, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, we want the, the landscape to be full and and pleasant and feel as though you're it's all one place mm -hmm. and you basically merge the, right. the downtown yeah. with the low tower marketplace right and, and so you do that through a pretty you can see in the photo Nimitz has actually been dropped down and this is we should say this is just a rendering it's a proposed idea right. but cities around the world have done this sort of thing right. they've buried highways created park decks above them describe a little bit how how this vision works and mention the rail too well fortunately i mean once you accept that the rail station is going to be there mm -hmm. to which others in the architectural world have objected mm -hmm. uh, it is going to be there, so far as we know, and we assume that that's the case. Right. Uh, and that will dump, a crude term, will, will dump a lot of people from around the island. Mm -hmm. When this becomes a more hospitable place in general, mm -hmm. that will be a great source of patronage for whatever is built and rented and so on within the Aloha Tower marketplace and the other piers as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and then putting the Nimitz Highway underground is a, a vital part of that. Uh, I mean, it's one way to to make it a more uh, peaceful mm -hmm. yeah. part of the garden linking downtown and right. And it's also reemphasized the connection of the Fort Street Mall from the mountain to the ocean. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, reestablish the connection again. You know the. The mountain and the ocean right. of you know the citizen that live in Hawaii mm -hmm. and the tourists. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. So you, yeah, you get rid of that giant <laughs> block yeah. there. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And we walk around the side and we just come up with it as mm -hmm. as we move along. So so yeah. we, we usually go walk around at night and during the days, you know, after meal and just see what we can do to make um, Honolulu better. Mm -hmm. So he has a lot of knowledge and we have a lot of creativity, so we collaborate. Yeah, so. oh, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. I would love to, I would love to see this happen. Uh, I think we need more green space and uh, if you can bridge over traffic while you're doing it, that's all the better. It also doesn't, you know, it doesn't remove any traffic, which is, uh, you know, the drivers like that. <laughs> you're not closing the road, you're just burying it. Um, well, let's talk about, so you guys have explored these kinds of ideas elsewhere as well, not just for the Aloha Tower uh, marketplace. Richard, you have, um, in addition to Civic Center, you also helped develop the master plan for Ward Village, which is 
very much coming into its own now, but you were working on that master plan also about 40 years ago, right? At least. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at the, about the same time as on the Civic Center master plan, mm -hmm. uh, we did that master plan. We, we published the Ward master plan in 1967. Wow. And then, of course, it's gone through several changes of ownership. It was sure. sold by the Ward family to uh, the owners of the Alamoana Center, and then they had a bankruptcy problem and sold it to Howard Hughes Company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even during the time when Victoria Ward owned it, they began, they built the theaters as a kind of a first glossy project. Mm -hmm. And it's been changing, as we all see since then. Yeah. And dramatically now. Yes. Yes. Well, let's, I want to throw up the, the image that we have from the original plan from 1967, uh, because it's really striking to me how, you know, it's not uh, building for building by any means, but it's really striking the similarities to what we have. We have these, it's still relatively low density, even though everyone, you know, looks at the towers and thinks, oh, so many towers, but it's actually still very, you know, there, it's a tower and then a lot of space yeah. still. It uh, is. Between them. And that's exactly what you guys, you know, envisioned in your plan. Was that inspired, do you feel like, from your experiences at Queen Emma Gardens and looking around at, you know, the way that towers and large landscaped courtyards? Maybe. Mm. I can't insist that it is, but, but, uh, but it must maybe by intuition yeah. or, or the, the habits of thought that we, that we had, mm -hmm. it uh, turned out that way. Yeah. And then the Howard Hughes company it has the ingredients to make it happen. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of money, evidently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so it, it, it does take that. And it, it takes management expertise, really sharp mm -hmm. management company, and vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so speaking, speaking of vision, we saw the, we saw the plan. But plans, as you guys have mentioned, are not static. It's, they're always evolving. Right. Um, we just saw recently this uh, image of the elevated parkways. This is a brand new um, announcement from Howard Hughes, that they're imagining something very similar to what you're proposing downtown. They're proposing a sort of landscaped, pedestrian-friendly linkage over Ala Moana Boulevard to Kiwalo Basin and uh, Ala Moana Beach Park. True, yeah. yeah. It, it's, uh, it's very interesting coming out. They have a new leadership uh, now, and, uh, and that's what he has proposed. Mm -hmm. He's saying, let's refresh the master plan. And it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't violate the master plan much, mm -hmm. but I think it adds a lot of interest and functionality to, to, to the whole idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And so let's talk about taking that then over to Ala Moana, the shopping center. You guys also have ideas for this part of town? Right. So yeah. we can, you know, Rich can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, well, Ala Moana Center is, when you think about it, it, it it's very isolated. And it, it doesn't feel like that when you're there because there are a thousand people <laughs> around you at all times. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it, it, it's a very austere experience in a way. Mm -hmm. you're, you're just there. Mm -hmm. And we think that it could be just as commercially viable by connecting it better to the park mm -hmm. and providing you know, places where there's some parking lots upstairs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. places to have a, a restaurant on a terrace, right. and you can, you can shop more mm -hmm. and experience the environment mm -hmm. better if that mm -hmm. were the case. And then we have this bridge idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next slide. Yeah. Let's show that. From approximately uh, Neiman Marcus mm -hmm. location. Mm -hmm. Going, in this case, leaving the roadway as it is, mm -hmm. And, and connecting with the upper level of Ala Moana and then bri bridging over. Right. With, again, a great deal of landscaping and uh, attractive features. Mm -hmm. You know, we could imagine such things as uh, sculpture gardens mm -hmm. along the way and so on. And just utilizing the whole vast space. They're both, both of these places, Ward and, 
and Ala Moana are 50 and 60 acres. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of space. And to use it more liberally toward the arts mm -hmm. would be a definite goal. Definitely. While also, again, providing that connection visually and physically yeah. across this major roadway, right? To the, yeah. to the water. Yeah. And you know, just go back from the Hawaiian knowledge about the Maokai and Makai, so yeah. people have that understanding right. about you know, the mountain and the ocean. Right. And it's make it pedestrian friendly. Right, right. Yeah. So. Well, let's take this idea, then extend it all the way to Waikiki. We're gonna, let's skip the, um, we all know what Waikiki looks like. Uh, let's skip Luliukalani Gardens and talk about the people mover, extending the idea of taking rail, which right now stops at Ala Moana uh, Shopping Center currently. The idea is to provide a connection to Waikiki, which is the main tourist hub of, of Oahu. Uh, tell us about this <laughs> idea of <laughs> bringing some kind of fun, funky, you know, Waikiki-esque people mover there that would then connect to the rail, because I love this idea. <laughs> I know, I think so. <laughs> well, it, it this, really, this one in Montreal. Is, it, it, really, it really, there are two sort of types mm -hmm. of this. There are a million ways of, of creating connections, mm -hmm. vehicular connections mm -hmm. between two places, but this one we feel needs uh, it began, so far as I know, in Lausanne, Switzerland, where they every 20 years they have a fair displaying marvelous technology that, that is uh, you know, accessible to people and fun, mm -hmm. and very much in the open, mm -hmm. much of it. Mm -hmm. We thought that actually, we thought, first thought of a gondola system, mm -hmm. and then between us, and especially Bundit began to realize that it would be a huge towering system right. if we had gondolas hanging. And, and they'd have to go over a lot of high-rise buildings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we thought, let's keep it lower yeah. like this and yeah. sort of light let's, rail, yeah, but let's also, see the next slide. also yeah. serious yeah. so that uh, you know, if it's a rainy day, we don't want people having to even though that might be fun for some, but it would not <laughs> right. be fun for right. all. Right. So you imagine <laughs> these kind of arched posts, but still, yeah. you know, st not blocking the streetscape, but just kind of hovering, right. yeah. and sliding over this traffic. And these arc spaces can be like a, you know, when people arrive to Waikiki, that's a start to give the sense of arrival. This mm -hmm. is a different uh, zone that yeah. we arrive to, yeah. and keep repeating it and keep going through our Waikiki. Right. So right. That's that's how we envision it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Oh, that's great. Well, we're almost out of time. Do you have some final thoughts on the role of planning? What do you, what do you? Well, we might speak for a second. I guess we have <laughs> that much or something. Where w when we look at this uh, slide 14, mm -hmm. we're looking at, as you know, Luliokalani oh. Gardens. Right, right. And the way it was, b before this was built mm -hmm. and obedient to the Waikiki Special Design District, mm -hmm. a rather new law, mm -hmm. zoning law. A lot of buildings were built in Waikiki, where <laughs> somewhere <laughs> the, uh, on, the, yeah. on the kind of yeah, southern end. The whole lot. Yeah, 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 a whole very, lot, a whole okay, lot, yeah. very little setback. Yeah. Then the law came, was passed, mm -hmm. and from then on, they had to have garden pools mm -hmm. and be much more open, less dense. Right. And that's an excellent example of the result of a change in the zoning law. Right. Yeah. So the cities can cities can shape, guide the way they are shaped and formed. Yes. Through law and through ordinances yeah. and things like that. And you know, for us too, it's just the idea of you know gather everyone together and have a clear understanding and clear path of communication. Mm -hmm work as a team mm -hmm. to come up with our good intention yeah. and, you know, to, to make this thing happen. It, yeah. we, we need the whole group of, you know, um, visionaries and uh, fun people with good intention to make that happen. Yeah. So, and okay. collaboration with all the discipline, landscape, mm -hmm. you know, urban planner, architects, and more importantly, uh, the people that live in that area to make all this thing happen. Right. Uh, these are just the thought that we just you know, plant a seed and you know, hope it gets somewhere. Yeah. So. Well, I think the seed has been planted. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thanks to all of you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Human Humane Architecture.